Hi again. Here's another story for read aloud. This week I chose The Keeping Quilt by Patricia Paloca, Palaco. And it's a story about a quilt. So I brought one of my quilts to show you. If we were in class, if I was coming into the class, I would bring more quilts for you to look at. And this is one from our family. We'll have to see what this quilt's going to look like, won't we? Do you have a quilt at home? The Keeping Quilt. Now you gotta look for the bright head covering the little girl is wearing. You see it? See her on the boat? There she is. We're gonna learn about her in a minute. When my great grandma Anna came to America, she wore the same thick overcoat and big boots she had worn for farm work. But her family weren't dirt farmers anymore. In New York City, her father's work was hauling things on a wagon and the rest of the family made artificial flowers all day. Everyone was in a hurry and it was so crowded, not like in back home Russia, but all the same, it was their home and most of their neighbors were just like them. When Anna went to school, English sounded to her like pebbles dropping into shallow water. In six months, she was speaking English. Her parents almost never learned, so she spoke English for them. The only things, there she is at school, the only things she had left of back home Russia was her dress and the babushka she liked to throw up into the air when she was dancing. Do you remember the scarf she was wearing? Over here, that's her babushka. And her dress was getting too small. After her mother had sewn her a new one, she took her old dress and babushka. Then from a basket of old clothes, she took Uncle Vladimir's shirt, Aunt Havala's nightdress, and an apron of Aunt Natasha's. We will make a quilt to help us always remember home, Anna's mother said. It would be like having family and back home Russia dance around us at night. Here's the materials they're gonna make. And so it was. Anna's mother invited all the neighborhood ladies. They cut out animals and flowers from scraps of clothing. Anna kept the needles threaded and handed them to the ladies as they needed them. The border of the quilt was Anna's babushka. You see the, the different shapes? On Friday nights, Anna's mother would say the prayers that started the Sabbath. The family ate challah and chicken soup. The quilt was the tablecloth. Anna grew up and fell in love with great grandpa Sasha. To show him, to show he wanted to be her husband, he gave Anna a gold coin, a dried flower, and a piece of rock salt, all tied in a linen handkerchief. The gold was for wealth, the flower was for love, and the salt so their lives would have flavor. She accepted the hanky they were engaged. Do you see the quilt? It became their blanket on the grass. Under the wedding hoopah, Anna and Sasha promised each other love and understanding. After the wedding, the men and women celebrated separately. There's the hoopah. That's what they stand under. And it's the quilt, isn't it? And there are people are, are celebrating separately in the Jewish faith. The men and women in those days celebrated in separate groups. When my great grandma Kare was born, Anna wrapped her daughter in a quilt to welcome her warmly into the world. Karol was given a gift of gold, flour, salt, and bread. Gold so she would never know poverty. A flower so she would always know love. Salt so her life would always have flavor. And bread so she would never know hunger. And there's the quilt. Carl learned to keep the Sabbath, to cook and to clean and do washing. Marriage will be someday, Anna told Carl. 
and there's the quilt being washed and dried on a line. Again, the quilt became a wedding hoopa, this time for Carol's wedding to Grandpa George. Men and women celebrated together, but they still did not dance together. And Carol's wedding bouquet was a gold coin, bread, and salt. Cuddle and George moved to a farm in Michigan and great grandma Anna came to live with them. The quilt once again wrapped a new little girl, Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen called Anna Lady Grandma. She had grown very old and was sick a lot of the time. The quilt kept her legs warm. On Anna's 98th birthday, the cake was kulich, a rich cake with raisins and candied fruit in it. And what's the, what's, where is the quilt now? Yeah, it's the tablecloth, isn't it? When great grandma Anna died, prayers were said to lift her soul to heaven. My mother, Mary Ellen, was now grown up. There's Anna. And the quilt is on her. And there's Mary Ellen. When Mary Ellen left home, she took the quilt with her. When she became a bride, the quilt became her hoopa. For the first time, friends who were not Jews came to the wedding. My mother wore a suit, but in her bouquet was gold, bread, and salt. The quilt welcomed me, Patricia, into the world. And it was a tablecloth for my first birthday. That quilt had many uses, didn't it? At night, I would trace my fingers around the edge of each animal on the quilt before I went to sleep. I told my mother stories about the animals on the quilt. She told me whose sleeve had made the horse, whose apron had made the chicken, whose dress had made the flowers, and whose babushka went around the edge of the quilt. Do you remember whose babushka it was? At the very beginning of the book, do you remember? It was Anna's. The quilt was a pretend cape when I was in the bull ring, or sometimes a tent in the steaming Amazon jungle. There she is at bedtime, and there she is when she's having playing make-believe. At my wedding to Enzo Mario, men and women danced together. In my bouquet were gold, bread, and salt, and a sprinkle of wine, so I would always know laughter. There's the quilt again, and there's all the people. Men and women dancing together now. 20 years ago, I held Tracy Denise in the quilt for the first time. Someday she too will leave home and she will take the quilt with her. This is our author and her husband, Mario Enzo. And this is her little, little girl, Tracy Denise. At the end of the book, she says, this book has become almost as important to me as the quilt itself. It is a wonderful way to not only introduce my remarkable family, but also demonstrate their personal triumphs, disappointments, and their ever powerful love that has reached across six generations in an ocean of time. Patricia Polacco, The Keeping Quilt. Thanks for listening. I hope you'll go home and see if you have any quilts at your house and what they look like. Mine are mostly geometric shapes, not flowers and animals on this quilt. I wonder what's on your quilts. Till we see, see you again, bye-bye.